Uh, our next speaker is uh, Nina Labart from Duke and U.S. Medical School. And Dr. Nina Labart is currently a senior research fellow in the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program of Duke and U.S. Medical School in Singapore. She earned her Master's of Science degree at the Free University of Berlin in Germany and her PhD from the University College London, UK in 2011, working in the field of human innate and adaptive immunity. In 2014, she joined Professor Antonio Bertoletti's lab where she is investigating the virus specific B and T cell responses during hepatitis B virus infection to better understand their role in protection and or liver pathology. Since the, out, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, she is involved in studies of SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells. And she'll be talking to us about SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell immunity in cases of COVID-19 and SARS and uninfected controls. Nina? So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so my first part of the talk will be indeed, as you said, about SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell immunity in cases of COVID-19 and SARS and uninfected control, but these are mainly data that have been already published. And then I'm going to talk about new exciting work that we are doing right now in the lab um, about induction, persistence and decline of very specific um, T cells in cases of asymptomatic infection with SARS-CoV-2. So first, before I start the talk, I would like to acknowledge everybody involved in that work, which is my boss, Antonio Bertoletti, and then mainly Anthony Camini and Christine from my lab, then also other people from Duke and US that help us and Limfas and Enyong's lab to help us quantify antibodies. And then of course, our clinical collaborators that help us recruit patients of uh, COVID-19, um, especially Jenny and Shireen, also Tani, Ju and Paul. And then Clarence, Liang, and Hannah, who really initiated the study of asymptomatic um, SARS-CoV-2 infection, and Mark Chen, who had us recruit patients that have been infected with SARS 13 years ago. So the first part will be, as I said, about this um, SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell immunity in COVID and SARS patients. So we asked initially two questions. We wanted to answer if there's an induction of T cells, are SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells induced against structural and non-structural proteins in COVID-19 convalescence? And the other question is more about the persistence of T cells because in order to have an immunity, you need that the T cells become memory T cells and persist. But of course, in this emerging disease, it's difficult to test long-term if uh, T cells that persist, but so we were lucky to have this cohort of patients that had uh, SARS in 2003. So we asked if SARS-CoV specific memory T cells still persist in individuals who recovered from SARS 17 years ago. So as a method, it's pretty simple. We use um, classical interferon gamma early spot assays with peptide stimulation. We do confirm some of our findings, of course, also by intracellular cytokine staining, but I will only show you the early spot results in this talk. So SARS-CoV-2 is a very big uh, virus, many, many amino acids long. And in this beginning, in the first, um, in the, the first study we did about this virus, we um, concentrated on the nucleoprotein as a structural protein and on the two non-structural protein, um, proteins NS, NSP7 and NSP13. So our, we are not using predicted um, peptides. We are using overlapping 15 mers. So they are overlapping by 10 amino acids. And we had basically a peptide library that was covering completely nucleoprotein, which we divided into two pools of similar um, peptide number per pool. And then also for NSP13, we divided this into three pools, and then we had one pool for NSP13. So then, um, then we tested COVID-19 convalescence in total 36 uh, patients. And we found that in all COVID-19 convalescence, they all induced nucleoprotein specific T cells every single one of them, but the induction basically of, of non-structural protein 7 and 13 specific T sets, there was almost nothing. So we can see in very few donors, they have a response, but really every single one have uh, induced nucleus protein specific T sets. And therefore also the dominance obviously for nuclear protein specific T sets is really, really, I mean, it's clearly dominant. 
Then in some of the donors, we looked more specifically for the nuclear um, protein specific T sets. We wanted to understand are they all targeting only one specific epitope or are they multi specific? And therefore, we divided the peptide pool into smaller peptide pools. And we saw that actually every single patient that we looked at, they responded to multiple peptide pools. So, meaning they had T sets targeting multiple epitopes of the nucleoprotein, and some of them were CD4 and some of them were CD8 T cells. Then we came to our next question, how, how, how does it look in SARS recovered patients, 17 years post infection? So we do, we use a very similar approach, but we use um, this time um, nucleoprotein specific peptide sequences that are specific for nucleoprotein of SARS-CoV-1. And then again, the NSP7 and 13 peptides, which are identical because these um, two proteins are 100% conserved between two, the two viruses. And actually, the, what we find is really um, is very similar to what we have found in recently COVID-19 convalescence. And we could still detect directly ex vivo um, SARS-CoV, basically, the nucleoprotein specific T cells in every single one, but not many T cells for NSP7 or NSP13. Then we wanted to ask are these um, SARS CoV um, specific nuclear, nuclear protein specific T cells, are they able to cross react with the nuclear protein of SARS CoV 2? And yes. So in green, we see we stimulated the SARS CoV and then blue with SARS-CoV-2 peptides, and we see that there's a cross-reactivity, even slightly lower, but we can find also in SARS patients, SARS-CoV-2 cross-reactive T cells directly ex vivo. And then what is important, we tried an in vitro expansion experiment, and which sees that, which finds that um, all these um, SARS-CoV specific T cells that we find, they can, up on recognition of the of the peptides, they can expand and proliferate. So meaning probably when SARS recovered patients would get infected with COVID, with SARS-CoV-2, these T cells would be able to expand. Then along with all these experiments, which was not exactly really planned, we of course also studied unexposed donors to mainly actually as a control initially, but then we saw that also in the unexposed donors and some of them, yeah, we find also cross-reactive T cells to SARS-CoV-2 for nuclear protein, but also this time really um, in, for some of them for the, um, the non-structural protein 7 and 13. So you can see it's, the pattern is different in COVID-19 and SARS recovered, we find mainly T cells for um, nuclear protein, but in the healthy, it's more mixed. And in some, there's a clear dominance really actually of the non-structural proteins. And then again, similar to what we had done in the SARS patients, also here we tried in vitro stimulation experiments. So basically we, we grow during nine days, 10 days, um, the PBMCs of these healthy donors with after stimulation with SARS-CoV-2 specific peptides, and they do um, expand meaning again that they are this, this pre-existing T cells can actually expand and proliferate. So just to summarize this first part, so we found SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells in cases of COVID-19 and SARS and uninfected controls. And just to, say, to show you again, in COVID-19 and SARS, all of them had nuclear protein specific T cells and some of them really a minority had also T cells specific for the non-structural proteins in unexposed, okay, half had no, cross-reactive T cells that we detected, but the other half, most of them had actually um, cross-reactive T cells to the non-structural protein, but also some for the structural proteins. So in conclusion, COVID-19 pa recovered patients mount a multi-specific T cell response against the structural nuclear protein. SARS-CoV-2 cross-reactive T cells in SARS recovered patients are able to robustly expand after encounter with SARS-CoV-2 peptides and virus specific T cells induced by beta coronavirus infection are therefore long lasting supporting the notion that maybe in COVID-19 patients, they will also develop T cell long-lasting T-cell immunity. And the SARS-CoV-2 specific T-cells can be detected in about 50% of unexposed donors. Okay, you need to take into account that we only looked at the small part of the protein, but we found it in 50% of the unex unexposed donors. And they were probably primed by common cold coronaviruses, but maybe also by other beta coronaviruses of animal origin. 